Beat Edit has this great feature to add extra markers in addition to the beats and the best possible way to actually understand this is to just play with it, experiment with it. So here you've got the beat selection section and here we can enable add extra markers and now we have all those sliders here and let's just play with it while the music is playing to understand what's going on. If you listen to the beats of the song, it is always a very monotonous pattern and it goes on and on for the entire song. And if you want to create some more variation, then what you need to add are those extra markers. So let's see what's happening when we start to add some of them. You can see these orange lines here appear and the click pattern, or also what you can see here, is uh, appearing to be less regular. So it's finding other points in the music that are for the rhythmical pattern, for the rhythm of the music, highly relevant, but are not really beats. So they are not part of this regular beat pattern. And so this allows you to create much more interesting animations in sync with the beat, because you can not only like trigger your animations on the actual beat, but also on those extra points. And to select the ones you need, you best play with those parameters here while the music is playing. So here you control how many you have, And here you control which ones are chosen. So musical means it takes really the most prominent ones, the ones that are most important for the music. And the more you move this to chaotic, the you can see it still sounds pretty musical. When I have it on fully chaotic even, or in particular if it's somewhere here in the middle. But still, it's not taking like the most relevant ones. So it finds beats or let's say ticks that are relevant for the music, but like the more musical you make it, the more it forces to choose really the most, this the strongest one, so to speak. And here it gets still musical, but with more, more variation. Uh, one thing that typically happens if you set it to 100% musical, it's not really distributed evenly. So if you say, I just want to have very few, yeah, and we take a look, for example, here at the beginning of the song, that here in this area, no peaks are chosen at all, because it says, well, the most musical ones are all here in the later part. So often it makes sense to say, I don't want it to be 100% musical, and now if you put it here somewhere in the mid-range, also here some interesting peaks are showing up. So this is what you should uh, do if you feel like, oh, in some regions there are no peaks, because it's like in the most intense parts of the music, it will have the most musical peaks. And so it will favor those if you set it to 100% musical. Now the last slider we have here is a minimum distance, and this acts like a filter. Yeah? So for example, here I have some beats very close together, and here for a long time nothing happens. So if I play this through, Listen what's happening now here. So they are three beats very close together. And if you say, I don't want to have that, so they should have never, they should never be so close together. Then you can raise this minimum distance slider until one of them disappears. And uh, so you guarantee now, for example, that no two beats are closer than 0.12 seconds. And this is also very useful if you're working with a beat wiggle. So for example, a move of this slider here at each peak consists essentially out of three times. So you have a fade in, where the slider here moves to the side. Then you have a hold, where how long it stays here at the peak. And then you have a go back, the fade out duration. And those together take in this case 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.15 is 0 0.25 seconds. So you know, like if you set this here to 0 0.25 seconds, which is pretty long here actually now, um, means that it guarantees you that two peaks for the slider will never overlap because one peak takes in total 0 0.25 seconds. So if you set the minimum distance to this value, you know that the beats are always chosen such that they never overlap, which is quite nice. Of course, if you now select here just every four speed or something like this, immediately more of these orange lines show up because like less of them are filtered by the minimum distance filter because of course it just filters the distance among the selected ones. Now the very last thing to mention is uh, here this die and this is like our random seed. So this means, of course, if you set this slightly here to 100% musical, there's just one way of selecting beats because it just says, take the most musical ones and they always, it's just one possible selection for this, namely the 
most musical one, but if you say make it more chaotic, then this chaos is based on randomness. And you can say, well, I like it about that musical, about 50% musical, but give me another uh, selection here. And you can just click on this die. You can see each time I click, it spits out another variant. So, and these variants are numbered here essentially, such that you can say, I want to go back to variant number one, and you can just enter here one to go back to this. So this is allows you to quickly see different variations, and it's not like each time look you click the die, the variant is gone, but you can always come back to a previous variant by just entering the right number here. So this is how you add more variation with adding extra markers, and in the next tutorials we are going to take a closer look at the beat wiggle.